once you lay down the lines right on your uh, either in 2D or in 3D, um, kind of a fry auto uh, wool experiment, typically the way that we would run it is like we would allow for in interaction between the lines, right? So that they would either attract themselves or repel themselves or have like some sort of behavior. So in the sense that your initial setup, right? It is in fact just a setup, like it, it lays out uh, densities, right? And then the fry auto as a self-organization process like uh, can take over as a second algorithm, which could be pretty cool. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess if you want to mention something, um, let me bring up quickly Freyoto for anyone else that might not know about this. Um, so Tiga was referring to one of the more famous kind of experiments by Freyoto, Freyoto being a um, structure engineer and architectural designer. Um, uh, in this specific case, and very uh, genius one that like primarily used material behavior as a way to compute uh, specific forms to uh, to arrive at specific calculation of form. Um, if you guys never heard of Ryoto, highly recommend checking out his work with soap film and fibrous structures. Um, what's interesting here is that uh, basically soap or um, some sort of agent inside the kind of a, a water-based solution allows for a um, purely symmetrical type of pattern of, of threads that you see here on the left over time to organize and kind of attract each other into a minimum, um, uh, minimum path type of algorithm, right? So this is, this is a optimization, if you want, uh, type of procedure, right? in which the total length of lines here, right, is much less than the total length of lines that you see basically here, just because they're able mm -hmm. to, um, to organize themselves. But um, I, can, uh, I can absolutely see um, an immediate connection, right, Tegan, if you want to take this thing on this level. And of course, anything that you would write on a script here, uh, even if it's two-dimensional, would directly relate three-dimensional behavior and we can further talk about uh, let's say how one could even draw uh, surfaces or kind of uh, membranes that would react in a similar way. Do um, you want to also bring up the... No, I'm just, the hyper object it seems like it could be an interesting way to view what he's crafted like towards the end you know you're getting into mm -hmm. you know more uh, volumetric That's elements. Right. I mean, if anything, I think what Daniel is bringing up here is that maybe there is a starting, right, kind of condition or whatever that is. That doesn't need to be a hypercube, but there is a starting environment in which you draw the initial polyline as a uh, as a boundary or as one type of line that goes through, then gets divided, and then further um, all the other processes that effectively we we're talking about. And you can see also how very easily we can go into curvature as well as you know, oh, curvature sorry. from lines. That's what I was trying to show. I see. I see.